Welcome to a new Protein Bros podcast segment called Bro Talk. We have a exciting new format for you guys. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to say excited probably four or five times. That's how excited I am about it. Okay? We're psyched. We're pumped. Kyle and I have over 30 years combined experience in the fitness industry. We have tried thousands of different protein bars, powders, drinks, snacks, and we are genuine experts when it comes to what's the best and what's not. You guys are our guests today, and I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to be talking a lot about fitness news. We're going to answer some questions from you guys, and we're going to react to supposedly from our producers, they told us, some hilarious videos. Some cat I videos. Hope, I hope they're good. We're going to do some product rankings. We might talk about the Super Bowl. We might cover a little bit of our lives. So stay tuned, buckle up, strap yourself in. It's a bro talk. Big time news globally in the fitness world. We have the CrossFit Open, which starts on February 29th. It is a leap year, so we get to use that date for something. And we got the Arnold Classic. Sports Festival. Sports Festival. So Arnold Classic Sports Festival has like a hundred different sports that are going to be competing. There's wrestling, there's taekwondo, um, there's powerlifting. The ones that we love to follow are the powerlifting, the world's strongest man, as well as bodybuilding. What should we expect in the bodybuilding category, Kyle? Well, in my personal opinion, I think that it's pretty much Hottie's bodybuilding show to lose. He's got Samson that is also... Probably, you know, he's he's a he's a competitor that's got all the tools necessary to win. But I think that it's just Hottie's time right now. Hottie was very close to winning the Olympia, barely got edged out by Derek, and um, and former Olympia winner, right? Yeah, he yeah. comes. He's going to be completely shredded. You know, he's going to be super wide. I just think that he's going to be hard to beat. Another reason I love uh, Hottie, and I think that you know he's going to be a shoe in to win, is uh, his coach Haney Rambod. Good friend of ours. Had him on the podcast. Awesome guy. Honey's the best bodybuilding coach in the history of bodybuilding. Yeah, coaching. his his record really speaks for himself. He doesn't need my endorsement. You know, he's got many many Olympia titles that, that kind of do that. Twenty five now. Yeah. So there are some cool other competitors that are going to be at the uh, the Olympia. If you've uh, been following bodybuilding, Nexzilla on uh, Instagram, who legitimately has the biggest legs that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, he won his IB, IFBB Pro card in the last like six months. He, yeah, he was an amateur just like com- a few months ago. Competed right? in yeah, competed in an IFBB Pro show the next weekend. I don't was that the Olympia? I can't remember. Anyways, he did it back to back. Um, you know, he stood up on stage with you know some of the best IFBB pros, and he kind of earned his spot um, in the conversation. I'm interested to watch him because he you know once you start getting into the IFBB ranks, you got to start really dialing in your conditioning. And that was like what, you know, he had a problem with is he wasn't super conditioned. His legs didn't look very, his legs were massive. They're the biggest legs on stage, but they were not conditioned. He didn't have striated glutes. And you know how I like striated glutes. Got to be. Bottom line is he's gigantic. He's a fun name to follow. Also a fun one to watch would be Andrew Jack. Would love to see how they finish, how they kind of ascend the sport and uh, who's going to be the names to watch come the Olympia time uh, this fall. Yeah, I also also heard for this Arnold Sports Festival that we got the man, the myth, the mountain, the mountain, you know, Hathorpe, Hathorpe, yeah, Hathorpe, supposedly going to beat some of his records, supposedly going to deadlift over a thousand pounds again. What said a, gonna, yeah, what a psycho! Said he's going to, yeah, said he's going to try to beat all of his previous records that he's already done at the Arnold. Uh, looking forward to watching it. If you guys don't already know, again, February 29th is the start of the Arnold Sports Classic. <laughs> And in local fitness news, we have Brickyard Fitness is hitting their one-year anniversary. They're hosting a big-ass birthday party on February 17th. That is a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Congrats, Steve and Nina. Congrats to Steve and Nina. Some really great people. Friends of the friends of the uh, show and the company. Going to give it a little Pat McAfee clap. Yeah. And what else do we have going on, Kyle? February 24th, we have a Protein Bros and Supplement Superstores Bro Lift going on. Full-on community workout. our friends you're at all invited. Element Fitness. If you're watching this right now, we hope you're there. It's February 24th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Bryce and Brock, the owners over there at Element Fitness, uh, great ambassadors for local fitness, and they put over a million dollars worth of equipment in their gym. I can't wait to see it all. I know they got new locker rooms. I mean, it's basically a brand new gym on the interior of that place. Uh, we've done a lot of fun things with them over the the years, but I'm excited to see the whole new gym on the inside. Uh, again, that's February 24th, a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We hope to see you guys there. And it's going to be me and Jeff there just doing a pose down for at least a couple hours. Yeah. Probably after that, we're going to do a bring your posing trunks. Let's go. In our next segment, Bros Knows. <laughs> This 
is fun, Kyle. You uh, you were working at Zan Nightclub, I believe, at the mm. time. No, uh, no, no, Jeff. That wasn't when we met? No, we met before then. Uh, I don't want to tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> because that's not even fun. It's actually a fun story. One of our uh, coworkers at the time, Mike Taylor, really awesome dude, good friend of ours, he was working with Kyle at Zan Nightclub, and uh, Kyle was working the door, and I was showing up freshly orange tanned, no, as no, a twenty-one-year-old no, no. trying to get into the club, listen, and this guy was the gatekeeper. No, 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 no. Mike Taylor said, "Hey, I got this new job. Obviously, I knew where he was working supplement superstores, and he said my boss has got this girl in town, and he's wanting to impress this girl. Can you can you do it up right for him when he shows up at the bar tonight? Can you open the velvet ropes? Can you say good afternoon?" Or good night. Or Could you address good, me as Mr. Wasserman? Good evening, Mr. Wasserman, and let them both through the velvet ropes in front of the line. And me, being a good guy, I was like, sure, if they have 20 bucks, I'll do that for them. I'm, not only did I not pay him $20, I made sure to pull up on a golf cart with said girl. I took that $20 um, out of Mike Taylor's protein She was powder. my new girlfriend from the great state of Illinois coming to visit. And uh, the two of us pulled up on said golf cart, and there it was, Kyle opening the velvet rope, lying around the corner, and he said, Mr. Wasserman, we've been expecting you. So good to see you. This must be the lovely new girl you were telling us about. Knowing Jeff and who he is now, I would never go back and do that again. I would go back and slap my former self, be like, don't do that to his ego. He doesn't need that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was awesome. And so anyways, uh, made for a really great night. Uh, we had a couple more people who were like instructed to just – you know, pretend like it was a huge deal that I was introducing them until we got to Taco Bell around 2 a.m. And you uh, looked as cool as a guy can going into a college bar in a college town of Springfield, Missouri. That's exactly <laughs> right. At the age that we were, I had like $14 to my name and I spent all of them. Yeah. And then we get to Taco Bell and there was this homeless guy that worked the, t the front desk who was only had one tooth, but he was the only one that could work that late at Taco Bell. And he also knew me by name and I did not, I did not bribe him at all. He was just like, Jeff, good to see you. And I was like, would you like this your, was actually kind of embarrassing. Would you like your, <laughs> you, I wish you wouldn't have known my name actually, sir. The five Chalupa order like normal, Mr. Wasserman. Yeah. He said, sir, we already have the, 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 the cheesy gordita crunch is ready for you, sir. Mr. Wasserman. We're sorry. We're still out of the taco pizza. <laughs> That's not even a thing. Mexican pizza. Oh my God. <laughs> That's how right. much Jeff you see. Talk That's about. not even a real thing, but uh, yeah, that was just a fun night. And uh, lo and behold, Kyle started working for us mere days, weeks later. Yeah. I go to a lot of different places because I like to see my friends and a lot of my friends own gyms. And so I bounce around all over the city. Um, I'll go to um, Brickyard Fitness. I'll go to Element Fitness. I'll go to Strong Barbell Club. I will go to Zone 6. I will go to Olympic Gym. I will go to the Foundation. You know, like a lot of people like to go out to lunch for their like corporate, you know, you know, networking and so forth. I like to attend different gyms and see different people and just see how people are doing. I go to MC CrossFit for the majority of the time. Shout out Nathan, friend of the podcast. Shout out Toya, also friend of the podcast. And uh, that's where I've trained for probably the last like four or five years. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, my home away from home. I also like to go to the bro lifts that we have. Community lifts, those are great. Um, check in with my friends that way. So yeah, I get Kyle out. to work uh, chest with me about once every six months. It's awesome. Yeah, we hit chest at the foundation last week. Uh, I don't ever work out chest anymore and Jeff's catching on me as far as strength goes. Getting there. So here's the thing about carb powders. If you specifically oat powder. Oat powders. Oat powders, carb powders in general, when you're when you're looking for something that is typically what these are used for is if you're looking to add extra calories to your diet. A lot of people like to get hung up on the on the conversation of, you know, well, whole foods this, yada yada yada. Um, the good thing about oat powders is it is a whole food, but it's, it's easier to digest. It's easier to get more quantity in and it's easier to get more calories in, um, without the bloating that is a lot is associated a lot of times with eating whole foods. Um, so I'm of the thought process, especially if you're a hard gainer, you know, in the stores, we run into a lot of people that will be eating, you know, 3,500 calories a day and they will be 160 pounds. And like, I can't gain weight, right? Some people's upper limit of their, um, their, their metabolic capacity is very, very high. And 
the way that you find that out is just by slowly and incrementally increasing calories. And typically you're going to increase those calories from the macronutrient of carbohydrates. So if it's easier for you to get in more calories that way, and, um, you, you want to have something that is not going to bloat you as much. Now, bloating is kind of person to person. Um, there's lots of different situations that you're going to run into with people that will have bloating issues with products that um, are different. But as long as it doesn't bother you in that way, I think an oat powder is good to add into your into your um, diet because it's, you know, it's an easy way of getting in more calories throughout the day. You can also, like I said, you can eat you know, whole foods too. But a lot of times when somebody has a very fast metabolic rate and they're eating a lot of food already, they're like, I can't eat anymore. And so finding liquid ways to get in more calories is, is beneficial to those people a lot of times. Or you could follow Kyle's go-to route of pouring an entire just packet of quick oats into his protein shake. Favorite sandwich. Um, that's like a really actual tough question. Um, but gun to my head right off the top, I would say Penn Station East Coast Subs is my go-to. They have a chicken teriyaki with grilled onions, and it is phenomenal. I usually do grilled banana peppers on it too. Fresh bread. They also grill the meat right in front of you, toast it all in front of you. I love that sandwich, dude. If you haven't had it, it's awesome. Okay, I'm going to break this down into three different categories. So... First category is going to be fish. My favorite fish is going to be crappie. If you guys haven't ate, if you haven't caught, as they say, a mess of crappie. A river and, fish. And, and ate a bunch of crappie. That's the best one to go for as far as fish goes. Next would be big game. In my opinion, just to keep it accessible to everybody, I think just some deer backstrap is delicious. Very good. Um, third would be birds. And in this case, I would say quail. Shot a couple quail over this past season, ate them. There's not much to them, but man, they're delicious. Freestyle follow-up question. Have you had quail eggs? How are they compared I have not to like had chicken wild eggs? quail eggs, but I think I have had quail eggs at like a restaurant. Any good? I've never had them. I think it was on like an omelet that I had, I want to say. And uh, I don't think I noticed anything different about it. Yeah, I've never had it is like fancy. a... fancy. You yeah. see quail eggs on a menu and you're like... Yeah. Let's go. They'll charge me $10. They're like, more yeah, they're like, this will be at least $15 you can more buy, than you would You can buy for. ostrich eggs and scramble those, and it's just like a dinosaur. Like, All right, now we're going to wrap this bad boy up with some hilarious videos that Kyle and I have not seen yet. So hopefully you guys picked out some good ones. It takes a lot to make us laugh. Ah. Here we go. Thor getting after it, dog. The mountain, 969 pounds, just like we used to do back in the day. 333 kilograms, his body weight. If you were like, <laughs> honest honest question, Kyle, if you were like 5'4", and you were doing uh, a, a- If like I was a, your height. A, a, oh, a maximum, like let's say you're, uh, this is a serious question. If I was like 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, would deadlifting become easier because I don't have to raise the bar as much? It has nothing to do with your height. It's more your levers. So, right. like how long your femurs are versus your legs. Let's how, say I have really, really long or arms. Or how long your femurs are versus your arms. Yeah, let's say I have really long arms You basically want to have short, short legs, long arms. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Okay. I think, though, if you are 500 pounds and 6'10", it doesn't really matter because you're going to be a freaking monster anyways. And that is what Thor is. He's a monster. He's a big dude. One of the biggest. Oh, God. Uh, I don't even know what happened just Dude, there. Dude, that's only happened to me like five times before. Yeah, in uh, the the basketball world, there is breaking a backboard or, you know, shattering a backboard on a dunk. I think that's like the impressive thing. I guess in lifting now, we break lap pull-down bars. Yeah. If I'm the owner of that gym, I'm like, uh, oh, hopefully he signed his waiver. And, uh, yeah. Let's just, uh, you know, send up a prayer because he's safe. Thank God. He's pissed, though. Did you see him get off here? Yeah, he's like, I had three he's more. Like, I'm, dude, the caption, listen. I had three more sets left. I did not achieve Some maximum bullshit. hypertrophy yeah. because of this bullshit. Hopefully he doesn't own the gym. Ah! Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, dude. Uh, that's not good. That's going to end up in an Feels like a bag arm. of sand. Yeah. <laughs> Name yeah. that movie. It is uh, not. <laughs> 40 year old virgin reference Feels like a bag of sand it's like honest to god that is the grossest thing i've ever seen yeah 
That is bo- body dysmorphia uh, personified. Children, don't inject random oils into your body. Into your shoulders, um, into your delts, into your traps, into you your biceps. If you do decide to do that, maybe and put then, some in your legs too. The sad part is they say like, they're skipping leg day, and then he just skipped his legs completely with the synthol and the other cooking oils he decided to inject into himself. Yeah. Dude, I love the comment. I love the confident face. If, hold on, hold on. But <laughs> like, here, this is tough. Here's the, you know? tru- here's the truth yeah. of the matter, though. If Jeff were to go down this road, look at those traps, bub. You're a big trap guy. You're Trapzilla, they say. Always have been. And, uh, you know, I feel like if we threw a little bit back here, just a boop and a boop, we could get your freaking traps even bigger. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk about how casual the guy is next to him, who's just doing these chin-ups on on his lap. He's so hard trying to break that lap pull-down bar, he can't. But, uh, you know, shout out to him for being natural. But the fact that he's just lifting next to this dude and not even looking, he's just he's, like, hold on, casually just lifting next to him, not is even thinking it's a big deal. Olive oil in your muscles really not natural. It's not performance <laughs> enhancing. It's not performance enhancing, and olive oils are natural. That's a good point. The guy's I actually go, I just go out got on a limb here and say that this guy is natural. Healthy fats, really good omegas in there. Ooh. Got to go back to the technique and watch that again. Uh, that looks painful as all hell. Um, Yikes. Oh, kind, that, of, kind of hits him in the ding ding on the way down. I, yeah. I'm not sure, but. Depends like, if he was leading with look, it. Watch. Ooh. Oh. oh. He's gonna right have a, in the balls, too. Have a hard like, time. add insult to Would injury. love to find a follow up on that yeah. if that guy's doing okay. Yeah. Gonna have a hard time having kids. Mm hmm. Oh my gosh! Just Why would anybody dick. let her do that? This poor gal. This poor gal. What's her? What's her? Skips the intro to CrossFit class, goes right in. Like, ah, it looks like a, I can do that. What's her quads made of? Macaroni and cheese for it to just dent like that? Like, my god! Oh my god! I didn't even know that was a possibility. Did you know it was a possibility to do that? I've never I mean, seen it, such a. We're thing. talking only one hundred and fifteen. Just one hundred and fifteen pounds so, will turn your uh, quads into. Did you she know. rip? Did she rip her quad there, or did when the bar fell down, it like snapped it off? I think it's a dent, some kind of dent we have dealing with. Her I felt like quad. it went out of her leg, not down. You know what I'm saying? Like what? I don't feel like it's a dent. I think it's the opposite. Like no, it's a, no, that's it's a, a dent. pop. It's a that's pop a, out. That's a dent, bro. What are you talking about? Have I seen that completely different? Yes. I feel like it's 3D punched out of her leg. How? No, that is a dent in her leg. Look, she's like, hey, listen, my quads are made of macaroni and cheese. They dent easy. Can you kind of help me? I don't know what just happened there. I still have no you idea what, what happened there. You know what I'd have done if you were my partner and we were doing a CrossFit event and that happened? I would have pulled a major pain and I'd have broke your finger. And would have been like, <laughs> now you don't have to think about it. Yeah. Now you can just deal with the pain of your finger being broke. That is how he sounded. Shout out to Wayne. Wayne's. It's my best. Yeah, it's my major best pain. impression. <laughs> yeah. And that wraps up Bros React. And now let's get a little bit into... This is where we get personal. Personal lives. What have you been up to, Jeff? Yeah, a whole lot of... uh, Just got back from Baltimore. Uh, Hannah and I, my fiancé, went to Baltimore to check out the AFC Championship game. Brought us a win home! It was all because of our cheers. Here's Um, my question. 50 years had been since uh, the city of Baltimore had hosted an AFC Championship game. And the first ever as Baltimore Ravens. And um, happy to say that uh, Kansas City spoiled that party. And uh, the Chiefs brought home a W. I got to know this. While you were there, yeah. did you see or uncover any of the script writers? Like, did you see anything that would have led you to believe that there was a script going on? No, here's a real funny story. When we got it done with the game, it was really quiet. I, like, started off by sitting next to all Ravens fans you to be quiet. like, hey, guys. I'm sure you were annoying the shit out of everybody sitting by you. No doubt. But I didn't. <laughs> yell or scream i simply was just like hey guys i respect the ravens organization we're just here to have a good time not trying to spoil anybody's night this is a fun night for all of them and they were all cool and all the ravens fans around me were cool uh but then we get done with the game and it gets really quiet like as soon as it became over no one said a word um people gave us like a fist pound said good luck and so forth but then we get out to like the um like the i don't know the big open area the concourse if you will and um, a bunch of hammered where, dudes were where standing the next to me. Were. That's right. And uh, we got to the area to like stop and wait to go piss. And um, some dude looked at me all like befuddled and drunk and just like just waiting for me to say something. He just staring at me right in the eye like. And I said, you know, head nodded. I'm like, what's up, dude? He's like, 
you know that was rigged, right? <laughs> He's like, you know that was rigged, right? And I was like, yeah, man, I guess, um, you know, they paid Zay Flowers to fumble that ball on the one-yard line, and they paid Lamar Jackson to throw that interception in the end zone. They, pay, they paid the, uh, the All refs. All the script writers. They, they, they paid the refs to not call the tripping call on Chris Jones that would have been a uh, safety in the end zone for us. Not to mention the uh, the holding call that wiped out a touchdown for the Chiefs. But anywho, the Chiefs totally got It you is know, scripted, got, though. It is scripted. It had to be. Yeah. Had to be. So, anywho, uh, yeah, it was a great weekend. We watched a win. Got some, uh, you know, some... Some crab meat, some chowder, tried out all the Baltimore's finest. And I'm going to tell you right now, I had no idea that Washington, D.C. was 45 minutes one way and Philadelphia is 45 minutes the other way. What is Baltimore known for? The Orioles and the Ravens. Oh, I mean. And crab meat. Crab I, cakes and football. That's I, what Maryland does. I, yes! Crab cakes and football! Nice. That's what Maryland does! <laughs> well, cool, man. Glad you guys had a good time. Yeah, dude. What'd you do with all your kids? <laughs> What you do with all three of your kids? Well, this weekend, how'd you get out and get crazy? This weekend, we uh, we had one of my favorite weekends, of favorite events of the year. We had our banquet. We had the uh, core values award, and it's always good to get our entire company together, give out awards, recognize people that have been working really hard all year for us. Um, and you know, I, it was just a fun event. I think it was the best one that we've had in the last couple of years, in my opinion. You looked and, dapper. Um, you certainly looked dapper. Yes, so did you uh, in your in your uh, velvet velvety, uh, you know. Some might just call it a tux. Yeah, whatever it was, a tux. Um, but I wanted to give a shout out, you know, to to Nick Hurd, who Nick Hurd just kind of kind of swept through the deal. Did did a bang up job this past year. One manager of the year, one store of the year. Um, so yeah, and our ultimate prize, the core yeah, values core award. values award. So you know, I just wanted to say that you know. Congratulations to him. And that's basically all that's happened in my life. In the Secondary life. shout out here to Thatcher who won our hardest worker award. Yeah. That wraps up Jeff and Kyle's personal lives where we overshare with you, the guests. And now we're moving into the most exciting segment in all of fitness podcasting. We are going to be ranking and doing our favorite formula one tiers. According to the internet, S tier is superior. It's above the letter A. After that, it's A, B, C, D. But S is superior, mm -hmm. and so it's the tip top. And to preface this for our first ever protein tiers, we have to preface it with Formula One. Kyle and I were around for the first ever two flavors of Formula One that they ever made, and that was Juicy Watermelon and Fruit Punch. Now, I believe it was called Tropical Punch back in the day, but now it is Fruit Punch. And I can tell you... They don't really make a bad flavor, so this is going to be tough. Kick us off, Thatcher. What's the first one? Chocolate mint. Starting off with a dandy of a flavor. That is I, unbelievably good. I am I am a vote for superior on this. I think, you know what? I'm somebody that will typically never eat. I will never pick a mint flavor. If you put me in, like, you know, 31 flavors. What's that place called? Baskin Robbins. And they have, like, a don't chocolate. Act like you didn't know the name Any of kind it. of mint. Any kind of, like, mint ice cream, whatever, I will never pick it. If mint is the dominant flavor, it is my least favorite. I'm just not a mint person. It's a polarizing flavor, but we have to talk about chocolate mint cookie, uh, AKA thin mint girl scout cookie from formula one. It is very chocolate with that perfect amount. That's of mint. the whole reason it's so good is because mint perfect. is not the dominant flavor in it. It is the best chocolate with the perfect Maybe hint. the best tasting protein perfect flavor out hint. there. When you drink it, you're like, why don't I drink this all the time? This and is, it never, you never get tired of it. You have 30 cans of it in a row. You'll never get tired of it. So it's good. awesome. So good. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. S tier. I'm an S tier guy. It was, uh, My, it was, it was life changing. Yeah. Magical charms. A newer flavor. I, I oh, actually yeah. like magical charms. Here's the deal. It tastes exactly like a marshmallow. So it tastes like the the milk that's at the bottom of like Lucky Charms, and I like that um, because I'm a I'm a little fat kid at heart, and I have a sweet tooth, and uh, it tastes delicious to me. What's your thoughts on it? I'm Man, probably it's good, it's really good, but because I know the other flavors that Formula One makes, somebody's got to be not in the top, you know. I would I would call it a C tier for me. Ooh, a it's, C. It's great, but it's not in the tops ah. for me. I'm not. It's definitely not in my top ten. C tier for me, but if you want to, if you want to, you know, push it no. up the top, I respect it. No, I, I probably agree with C tier. 
you're right in the fact that there are so many choices that, you know, I haven't I haven't bought one myself in a while, so I probably agree with you. What's the next flavor? Cherry lime. Cherry lime. This is our first one where we're going to be really disagreeing on this. Yeah. Cherry lime is refreshing. It's something I look forward to. I enjoy the kind of like cherry flavoring that is in that. Uh, the lime's not too strong. Man, it is. I might like it more good. if it was heavier on the lime side of things. Understand that, like, my dislike of cherry lime is purely just from a personal, like, I'm not super big on really cherry type flavors. If you really like cherry, you're probably going to like cherry lime. Um, but for me, because there's so many good flavors of Formula One and we have to rank them, I would probably put it as my D. So yeah, cherry lime for me, it's awesome. I would probably put it in the B tier right down the middle because it's got a nostalgic feeling for me. It was one of the first flavors of Formula One. Outside um, the, shout out Citrus Twist. Shout out Pink Lemonade. They didn't make it to the end. Yeah, but cherry lime axed. has. Got axed. Cherry lime has made it from the very beginning. Well, cherry I, lime is only a summer flavor now. Would you, so. put, would you throw it in the C's or the B's? Can't be a D. Yeah, Can't I'd be. throw it in a C. I mean, because I am legitimately a D on it. So That's fine. C. We'll have to split the difference. Yeah. So in the beginning, like I said, when First Form first came out with Formula One, it was just watermelon and fruit punch. And as we will get to soon, watermelon reigned supreme in that competition. Now, the fruit punch Probably is... Probably sold three to four watermelons the fruit, to the, the fruit punch. The fruit punch is... A pretty good fruit punch. It's good. It is a good fruit it's punch. It's very good. But like I said, kind of like with how I feel about cherry lime, it's like you're comparing against some pretty heavy hitters. Um, I'm probably middle of the road with fruit punch. I'd probably put it in like B personally or C. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the it, fruit it, is flavors, a good, it is a good fruit punch. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it up in the B category because, again, it was uh, one of the original flavors. You got to give it the respect it deserves. It's timeless. Yeah, and, and guys, understand this about the fruity flavors in Formula One. Back in you know two thousand nine or ten, when this first came out, there were so few proteins out there that had f flavors like fruit punch, and the ones that did have flavors like that tasted like garbage. They were so Trash. bad. They were so bad. When you so pull when you had all the lactose punch, out of of protein, um, it doesn't taste like milk anymore, right? So they would isolate way from lactose. And so it doesn't have that dairy flavor. It tastes like an actual like fruit juice or like a Gatorade or something like that. So, which, you know, like it's really good back then you would tell somebody you'd be like, dude, this, this fruit punch flavored protein is delicious. And they would look at you kind of like, do you not have chocolate? And I'm like, this is better than chocolate. You just got to give it a chance. Yeah. Way isolates that are chocolate back then were all trash. They tasted like small. Um, damn, I'm a, Big sucker for an orange dreamsicle flavor of anything. Uh, post workout, not the timing for me that I would like to drink that. So I don't know, man. It's really good flavor. Really good. It really tastes good. It tastes exactly like an orange dreamsicle. C tier for me. Ooh, there's nothing wrong with the flavor. It's like perfect orange creamsicle. It's just you know, do you want to drink orange creamsicle all the time? It's a good one to have in the rotation, though. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Sometimes, sometimes you feel a little, you know, fruity. And I know you feel fruity a lot. And so you got to have it in the cabinet ready on deck when you need it in rotation when you're feeling a little fruity. So I guess I agree with C. Is that what you said? I called it a C tier. All right. C tier works. Oh, juicy watermelon goes up the, into the superior. The original Has gangster of the protein. People don't know this, but yeah, the first ever flavor, Formula One watermelon, it was what these put them on the map. These young these days don't even understand what they're sitting on with Juicy Watermelon. Juicy Watermelon is the one. And it's, it's hard to flavor one. watermelon. Watermelon is typically just like that gum flavor of watermelon, right? Like bubblicious watermelon. Um, hard to flavor anything actually watermelon, like the fruit. So... It's really refreshing, dude. It tastes awesome. If you have not had the Juicy Watermelon Formula One, it's an absolute must. And because of how it changed the protein game, superior. I agree with that. I, I Here's a real stat. Probably from like 2010 to 2013, I don't know if I drank another isolate besides Formula One Watermelon. Not a once. Mm -hmm. That's all I drank. It was so good. Key lamp pie. Pat pie. I'm just, yeah, it just, it shouldn't be a flavor to me. I'm like, I'm so anti key lime pie flavored stuff. I love key lime I pie. I like the flavor I, I of disagree. key lime pie. I, I disagree with you. But I don't want to drink my pie. 
Here's the thing with key lime pie. It is a good flavor. I think it tastes just like key lime pie. It has that wang to it that we like with uh, with key lime Got pie. Got some zip, if you will. But here's what I'll say, and it's kind of like what I was talking about with the orange creamsicle. Sometimes you want to have it, sometimes you don't. It's a good one to have on rotation, so you can have it once every couple of weeks. Um, but having it all the time, Maybe not. Like a fruity um, beer. You only want one of them. You don't want to buy a six pack. That being said, I don't think that any other protein company out there could pull off a key lime pie isolate. It's a very hard flavor to pull off, and I think they did a phenomenal job with this one. Crushed it. But, like I said, from the standpoint of is it drinkable all the time, I'm a little bit lower because of that. So I would probably put it in C or D tier. Yeah, if you you know we have to put somebody in the D. If we have to put somebody in the D tier, I'm putting key lime pie there. But maybe we switch it later if I come up with another one. But that one goes into D tier for me. Dude, vanilla tastes exactly like a vanilla milkshake. When you try it, it's like it tastes like you're having vanilla soft serve or vanilla ice cream. They really nail that flavor. So it's not just like a standard vanilla. It's not like most vanillas when they came out, they were made to be blended with other stuff and people were pulling out the blender and making smoothies and this and that. This is just phenomenal with just water in a cup and it's got a little sweetness to it uh, without having actual any sugar in it. So that's a really good one for me. I'm putting it up in the B's and the A's. Yeah, Jeff makes fun of me all the time because if I were to go to have ice cream, I would literally just order a vanilla cone. With that being said, I think it's one of their best flavors personally. Um, it's one that I can drink consistently all the time, every day, consistently in the rotation. Because of that, I'm probably an A or B tier. I'll go A tier. Let's go A tier with vanilla. A tier. Yeah. Man. Nothing but superior. Oh, no. I remember where I was standing whenever I tried the Fruit Loop protein for the first time. Jeff's, Jesus Christ. It was the best tasting damn protein I'd ever had. It was so exact. It was so perfect. You guys who have been drinking protein for a while, you may have seen Fruit Loop protein elsewhere by other brands, but I can assure you that First Form was the very first company to ever make a protein flavor of Fruit Loop cereal, and it was called, I believe at the time, Fruity Loopy, and now it's called Loop de Fruit, I believe. Yeah. But it was it, called Fruity Loopy until they came down with a cease and desist letter. The whole thing about... Fruit, the Fruit Loop protein that they made, it was just the first protein that I ever tasted that I was like, well, that's exactly Fruit Loops. There was no question about, like, there's some flavors that you get, and you're like, oh, I can kind of see where they you know, they yeah, called it that. I catch that. But this was the first one you're like, that is exactly Fruit Loops. Now, I don't rank it as high as Jeff, but this is not because of the actual flavor of it. It's because I'm not a huge Fruit Loop guy. Never once have I been, you know, when Dude. I was a kid, I never once said, mom, go buy me Fruit Loops. I was a little chunk chunkster and I was like, give me some Reese's Puffs. Give me some life, you know, give me some, you know, something. you went, that was a stark contrast. You went from Reese's Puffs to cinnamon life, life. Cinnamon life. Yeah, right. dude, come All on. Right. Cinnamon life is fat kid. I mean, cinnamon toast crunch is fat kid. As I digress to the next segue here. Yeah. But, but anyways, I'm, I'm probably... Fruit Loop cereal, guys, like, that protein changed the game. I'm an A on Fruit Loop cereal. It's an A or an S. Whatever you think is appropriate here, Luke. Yeah. Root Beer Float. <sighs> man, also hard not to put in the superior <sighs> category here. Man. Another life-changing game changer. Root Beer Float, no one had done it right. No one had made it taste good. <sighs> man, you... You, you raise your eyebrow when you even hear the phrase root beer float as a protein flavor. You're like, how can that be good? I what, don't raise my eyebrows. What would that I taste just like? literally think I'm not going to drink that because most companies would not even come close to like doing it justice as a flavor. Um, most of the time when, when things are off the wall flavored like that, they're going to be not very good tasting. Fun story. A guy once came in looking for a green apple flavored protein and Kyle wouldn't even sell it to him. He was like, why would you? This is too what, bad. What are you doing? You're not going to like it, sir. Are you sure? It's five pounds. I, you really want to commit to 70 servings of green apple? It's a big commitment. You got to advise people. And it wasn't things. even a fruity flavor. It was just like a milky God, green apple. You got to advise, you gotta advise <laughs> people on it if you thought this through. Anyways. Um, it, it, anyways, the root beer float. You guys know when you finish a root beer float and there's a little bit of that slurry at the bottom, a little bit of root beer, a little bit of the uh, vanilla ice cream, and you kind of suck it up and you're like, dude, I wish the whole thing was like that. That's, that is root beer I think beer you invented float. the word slurry. 
No, it's a it's a word. Okay, look that up, Luke. That Is little, it a word? That little slurry. Uh, anyways, I love the romanticism of root beer floats, and uh, it belongs in the very very tip top. I'm a I'm a I'm a superior vote. Too. Superior vote for root beer float. It's unbelievable. If you haven't had it, that's a need. CTC, another just they were the first to do it. They nailed it. It was exactly the milk at the bottom of the bowl. Um, I like to crunch on my cinnamon toast crunch versus drink it. So it's not in the superior category for me, but it was life changing. It was one of the first mass produced formula one flavors that went nationwide and everybody loved it. Unbelievable. Here, here's the thing guys in the, in the supplement world, f- cinnamon flavored proteins. Ee, you guys have probably seen from our reviews. They're kind of up in the air. People can really screw them up sweeter um, vanilla yeah. is like what they typically just taste like. yeah and they kind of this is exactly cinnamon toast tastes crunch. a little bit like um sour Snicker, milk sn- yeah. snickerdoodle yeah but you know anyway ctc delicious it's it tastes exactly like jeff said the milk at the bottom of a bowl of fruit uh, of, of cereal for that i'm probably like a b yeah i think b is a great great call for it Ooh, one of the noobs one of the newbies cafe mocha Um, you know, I'm a huge coffee fan and I'm a huge chocolate fan. And so when they, when they put that together, it was awesome. I was excited, but I haven't had a ton of it since, to be honest with you. I haven't bought a container of it. So that should tell me it's in the C or B's for me. Yeah. These other ones I've drank hundreds of bottles of (laughs) the cafe mocha because it's brand new. I will say, does it get the respect? My my first impression of it. First time I tried it, I was like, this is delicious. It's great. It's got the good coffee flavor to it. The chocolate's not overpowering. It's a good blend between the two. But I haven't tested the sustainability of it. Very important. Can I drink this every single day for a full month and not get tired of it? I haven't tested that. So because of that, I would probably put it in like the C or D t- category. Calling it, a, I'm going to call it a, a C for now, but we should probably re-review these later because Cafe Mocha could be one of our favorites. Could be. Cafe Latte came out the same day as Cafe Mocha. I feel the exact same way as Cafe Latte <laughs> as I do on Cafe Mocha. Yes, uh, just like Cafe Mocha, I have not bought this one either, and um, so I don't. I don't know what the sustainability. Uh, Hannah, my fiance, is. made me a smoothie last night that had it in there, and it was awesome. So I will say that it blends extremely well. Yeah, it's awesome. If you haven't had it, it tastes fantastic. It's going to go into the uh, the B tier for me. Chocolate milkshake, superior. It's never going to get old. They ha- they made it taste exactly like you were having like a chocolate milk that's just a little thinner, like almost like a fair life maybe, if you will. They crushed the chocolate. When the chocolate came out, it was life-changing. I would make an argument for it being in the A tier. And it's not so much how I feel about chocolate because I think the chocolate is one of the best chocolate isolates you can possibly have. It is delicious. I, like Jeff, have drank hundreds of them in my lifetime. Um, it's more about the three that we have in the Superior right now. The three that we have in the Superior right now, they are, they're godlike when it comes to protein powders. Yeah. And I would just say the chocolate, it, it's not the one that I, when I'm recommending a protein to somebody, I go, if, you tr- I, if, I, if I recommend any of those three up top, I am like, there's no doubt in my mind that it will, their mind will be blown by the flavor of it. That's a good point. Chocolate Excellent point. Though, I'm, chocolate, I'm bringing it down. Bring it down to the A. Chocolate's just good from a sustainability yeah. standpoint. Versatility, really, yeah. tons of versatility to it, uh, but it will not blow your socks off because we've all had a chocolate before, but this is an unbelievable execution of chocolate. And uh, that they do it the best. Ooh. Ooh. Salted peanut butter has, has grabbed... The hold of me in the last month it is delicious. Taken the world by storm. Salted peanut butter. I didn't even butter. know I needed the salt. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Drank millions of peanut butter in my lifetime. and uh, Didn't know it mattered so much. The salt, you're like, ooh, okay. That's a little something different. I kind of like it. It's Okay, so this is the important part. Most of Formula One flavors are known for how good they taste because they have a real subtle sweetness to them. This is the first savory of the Formula One flavors that I've had, where it actually has a sweet and salty taste, and that salt really comes through, and it's not overbearing on the sweetness. And people out there that are sensitive to sweets, salted peanut butter is the perfect shake for you. It belongs in the A tier, in my opinion. It can't be messed up. Like, we didn't know it was going to be that good. It's fantastic. 
It is. It is. I when I first saw the 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 name of the protein, I was like salted peanut butter. You know, let's say, and then we I mocked you taste it. it. We mocked it. You taste it, and you're like, that is salted peanut butter, and that is delicious. Yeah, and we, like I said, it if you have a sweet and salty, you know, uh, craving, that's perfect. The absolute perfect protein for you, and it's also something you can drink all the time. Up in the A's, salted peanut butter. Guys, if you disagree with any of us, you're an idiot. Not only that, you're wrong. Yeah. But I would tell you, if you have a different opinion, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. Tell uh, us. Please let us know what you think is the you know superior Formula One flavor. If you do not agree with us, that's cool. But we are going to continue to do this with other products and other product categories. Um, so this is just the first of many that we will be doing like this. If you have some recommendations on some other things we should rank, make sure to put them in the comments below. As always, thanks for listening to the podcast. We love you guys. Appreciate your support. And if you haven't already, please share us up. Later, guys. 